I'm 25 years old, I'm from Dallas, Texas, and back in 2013, I had a mental breakdown. Uh, I was doing music, I was in a band, and what caused it was, while I was filming my very first video, my grandmother passed away from cancer, and I regretted not talking to her about the things that I wish I could have spoken to her about, and it was prior traumatic experiences as well. But summer of 2014 is when I came to Colorado, and myself and about 60 other youth at the time were sleeping behind in the parking lot off the 21st and Stout, where the new South Street Clinic is built. And I remember we had formed this type of tribal unity where, you know, we had to train kids with their dogs on the outside so that way if there were any lurking drug acts coming up, we had protection. But at the same time, I recall where police had came and warned us that, you know, if you don't want to vacate this spot, then we're going to trash all your stuff. And of course, people did adhere to some of it, but not everyone's able to get their stuff in time, so I witnessed friends had their stuff just thrown into the garbage and seeing them crying because some of these items were irreplaceable. <coughs> um, certainly heirlooms, memorabilia. And for me, it shocked me in a different way because coming from a church home back in Texas, my grandmother started a church called Church Home for All Outcasts. For me, it, was, it went a little bit deeper because when I was growing up, I was taught that even my Lord Jesus Christ was homeless. If this wasn't the case, he wouldn't have said the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man had nowhere to lay his head. Even Jesus looked for us. The Son of God himself came down to be with those people who did not have that chance to just be people. And for me, that alone, Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. Had it not been for my faith, I wouldn't have been able to make it to such a point to where now I'm living in the same building that I watched being built an entirely year later to where I can have some type of stability. And for me, that's just been a very big blessing. So to see this to see this bill pass be somewhat of a dream come true, but nevertheless a relief. Because I remember this past Christmas, I had to stay here. And it was an honor as well because I invited some of my friends that was on the street into my home. I know at the time they didn't have to worry about all oh, the police were going to mess with me on Christmas or on Thanksgiving. For that, I know it was not just a relief for me, but it was a relief for them, and I can still help but be mindful of countless others that were still out in this way. And with that, if you permit at least one minute and 45 seconds, I just have some shit with you. So your, your time is up. What do you have there? Wah! 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 Trujillo and Owen Courts. 
And every Friday they had this thing called Music Jam. Not only this, but they also have other um, options available for help, such as Mindfulness Mondays, where a lady named Anne Marie comes in. She does these Be Mindful classes, teaches you how to be in the element, feel your emotions, but not react on those emotions. And that has been quite beneficial for me because I have experienced discrimination in other cities, not here. But I know had I not received those type of practices and help, I would not have been able to stand, well, sit here today. But not only that, just the music jam, you know, music was a traumatic experience for me because I had to sing at my grandmother's funeral the same day I had my very first show. And knowing that's what triggered a lot of my stress to be able to have certain facilities that could, you know, alleviate that stress to get back to this point in my life, I appreciate it. But I know there's still help that my friends need that might not be down the same path that I was supposed to have. But nevertheless, still, while I'm in my apartment, they're still out in the streets. Now, I'm in, I'm in affordable housing, you know, with my faith heart, with my heart of faith. I can't do as much as I want to. And so that gets my psychological gears going, knowing I can't help as much as I want to, but there are people out there that can but they're stuck in such a predicament that they don't know if, whether they should keep going with the help that they're being, that they're offering. I appreciate that. We have some other folks waiting for testimony, but thank you for providing a good example for others by taking others into your home. Thank you so much for your testimony. In just a second, there's another question for you, Ms. Ann. What did I say there? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, um, and, and I appreciate your contributions here. Uh, as you see, my last name is Singer, but I think we have the real singer in front of us. So my, my question is, you mentioned all these different supportive services that you know got you to where you are today, which you know is, is part of what the opponents have been arguing, saying that they're you know we provide services, this is what's out there, this is what helps. And I'm just curious if you're willing to share this, you know, what um, how how were you introduced to these services? Was it uh, a ticket from a police officer? Was it a law enforcement contact? <laughs> well, for me, no, it wasn't. It was, well, I'm sorry. It was actually through caseworkers at Urban Peak. Uh, they told me about some of the housing options available. <coughs> I understand some people might not want to go through these because of such rules that are, you know, implemented for such programs. And I can understand it because to a degree, I know for me, it's a slight dehumanization of, okay, well, I do have this spot, but it's like my parents are still hovering over me. You can do this, that, and that, and the other, but you can't do that, that, and that. It's like, okay, well, how can I just live if I always have this cap over my head? And that's why I can understand some people might not want that option. Because it's still, you're still not a lot of your true individuality. Thank you, Mr. Adams, and for those of you who don't know, Denver Urban Peaks is a wonderful program to help homeless youth. So you can look that up and Google it, but um, it's not too far from the Capitol, and they do some amazing work to help uh, our youth transition from being homeless to the pathway that you, you see in front of us where he now has a home. Sounds like you have a job. And a, and a career as an artist as well. So thank you so much for your time and your testimony.